Alright, hello everyone and welcome to NFL Discussion Throwing in the Towel. I'm your host and NFL enthusiast, Dougie Doug, and this is a weekly segment on this channel where every week I pick one team and throw in the towel on their season. And with that, let's go ahead and get right into the Week 13 edition, starting with the AC East, which has no representatives this week. The Dolphins got a win, the Bills were on a bye, and the Jets and Patriots, well, already threw in the towel on those two teams. AFC North, we have two representatives, the Steelers and the Browns. And for the Steelers, everything that could go wrong did fall them on Sunday. For starters, they were thumped by a two-win Arizona team. The problem is that that loss, uh, the problem is that the loss may be the least of their problems. Uh, one week after finally surpassing 400 yards of offense for the first time in over three years, Pittsburgh managed just 317 yards. And now the team will be without uh, Kenny Pickett for the foreseeable future as he had surgery to repair his injured ankle and could miss up to a month of action. For the Browns, Sunday's outcome had to be a disappointing one, but not for the reason most of them expected. Uh, the league's number one defense let Cleveland down. In contrast, Joe Flacco didn't look out of place at all, leading the Browns' offense. If anything, a sliver of hope might have emerged that Flacco could provide a steady and presence behind center, assuming that he remains a starter going forward. I don't know why he wouldn't, but then again, Kevin Stefanski's never been... Uh, the best decision maker as a head coach. Uh, the biggest issue for the Browns right now is health. Miles Garrett is hurt and Amari Cooper suffered a concussion in that game against the Rams. AFC South, lone representative this week, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, they lost at home to the Bengals. Uh, their defense got carved up for 350 passing yards and uh, Christian Kirk went down first play in the game with a core injury that if I don't remember it might have needed surgery. I think it did. I don't quite know 100%. All of those things though, small potatoes, minor inconvenience compared to the biggest problem facing this team and that is the loss of Trevor Lawrence to a high ankle sprain. He's going to be out one game, who knows how many more games he's going to be out and depending on how long he is out, this could sink the Jacksonville Jaguars season. Um, cause, um, unless CJ Beathard can play well up to a level close to what Jake Browning played. but. But uh, you know, they could also lose their grip on the AFC self because the Texans aren't slowing down and neither are the Colts. AFC West, we have the Broncos and the Chiefs representing this week. Uh, the Broncos entered week 13 winners of five straight. The team was on a roll, moving the ball, stopping opponents, winning the turnover battle. That all came to an end on uh, on Sunday against Houston. At 6-6, six and six, their postseason hopes are still alive, and they do face just one opponent the rest of the way that has a winning record, but the margin of error is simply no longer there. And for the Chiefs, well, still, even the, even despite this loss, it still would be ridiculous to uh, panic uh, about the uh, the t about the uh, the panic over it. The odds of Kansas City winning an eighth straight uh, AFC West title are still high, very much in their favor. Uh, the Chiefs, I, had, I mean, I don't know if the, the Broncos are probably the only team that could challenge them for that division title, and I don't think they're going to do that. The Chiefs also have one of the best defenses uh, of the Mahomes era this season, and they also still do have Mahomes, who's pretty good at throwing the footballs, but these Chiefs are not the favorites in the AFC. They might not even be the favorites overall. Uh, and the team's inability to offer up any kind of consistent vertical passing game has become a genuine cause for concern. It's been talked about all season, and it continues to be an issue for this team, and that is the lack of pass-catching weapons outside of Travis Kelsey. So representatives this week, the Steelers in the north, the Jaguars in the south, and the Broncos in the west. Who is the team representing the AFC this week? It's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Kind of a toss-up here. Uh, Jacksonville still holds the, the division lead uh, in the south. The Broncos are on the outside looking in in the playoff picture, and the Steelers are in the playoff picture. But when you compare the Broncos and the Steelers, it's clear one team is better, that being the Broncos, and one team is worse, that being the Steelers. So that is your representative for the uh, AFC this week, the Steelers. Moving over to the NFC. Starting with the East, it's just one team this week. It's the Eagles. Cowboys got a win. Um, and the Eagles still own the NFL's best record at 10-2. But they're clearly not the league's best team after the beatdown they got from the 49ers. Now, the beauty of professional football is that it's a week-by-week -week league. Poor losses can be easily forgotten through the turn of an entire season. Think back to last season when the Chiefs somehow lost to the Colts but still won the Super Bowl. Um, one bad outcome doesn't define an entire campaign. The Eagles know they got outplayed. They've been knocked down, but this is a team more than capable of getting back up and still winning the Super Bowl. It's it's all right there, and they did add Jack Leonard to their defense, so maybe that makes a difference. 
Uh, NFC North, no representatives this week. Uh, Lions got a win. Vikings were on a bye. The towel was thrown in on the Bears. Or the, yeah, the Bears and the Packers. The Bears were on a bye. The Packers got a win. And the Packers are currently sitting at the number 7 spot in the uh, playoff picture. So I will be monitoring that situation closely. I like what the Packers have been doing. And maybe I was wrong to throw in the towel on them. Maybe I'll have to rescind that decision. It's not happening this week. But again, I'll continue to monitor. NFC South, one team this week, and that is the Saints, Panthers, and Falcons get a win. Uh, while the Panthers get officially eliminated from postseason contention, so hey, one for one on throwing in the towel. I guess that's not something to celebrate, but it's something to make note of. And for the Saints, Derek Carr has had a rough year, and not just based on his passing numbers. I mean, dude is taking a beating under center, uh, going into concussion protocol twice over the past three weeks, uh, and also playing through an AC jo uh, joint sprain early in October. I think he's got another shoulder injury now after that latest hit he took that knocked him out of the game. To his credit, he hasn't missed a game. Granted, those, that first concussion AC joint came right before a bye week, uh, but uh, it, there's no more bye week, so he's he's looking at at least a one game absence at the moment um but even when he is on the field well the saints haven't exactly got the best out of him uh he's throwing for 11 touchdowns and six interception now in fairness the car is not holding him his teammates also have to help him out as well NFC West, lone representative this week, the Seahawks. Uh, and the good news for the Seahawks is that Geno Smith played his best game of the season last Thursday. Uh, 334 passing yards and three touchdowns against one of the best defenses in the league. The bad news, it didn't matter. Uh, Seattle still came up short on the road for its fourth loss in five games. A defeat that dropped the team to 500 on the season and the outer fringes of postseason contention and the NFC. So the Seahawks are still very much in it, but... It is clear that they are losing momentum and they are losing crowd. The Rams are... The Rams swept them on the season. So if Seattle continues to stumble and LA continues to rack up wins, it's very possible that the Rams could just jump, pull ahead and then leave Seattle in the dust. Now, LA is outside looking in at the playoff picture, but that's another team I got to monitor too. Maybe I was wrong about throwing in the towel in their season, but even with their latest win... I'm not going to rescind that decision. It's just like the Packers. It's going to be one to monitor. So division representatives this week. We have the Eagles in the north, in the east, the Saints in the south, and the Seahawks in the west. Uh, looking, or, yeah. So this is the representative for the NFC this week between all the two teams. Obviously, it was not going to be the Eagles. I uh, just talked about them having the, the best record, but they lost the game, so they that's why they make the cut. And so it came down between the Saints and the Seahawks. And let's be honest, the Saints, the only way, they, the, only way this, the Saints make the playoffs is if they win a division. But you already lost to the Falcons. You already lost to the Buccaneers. Uh, so you're behind the eight ball there. Uh, they do have a rematch coming up with the Falcons and with the Buccaneers. Uh, but how likely are they to win those games? And also Derek Carr, what is his status? We've seen what Jameis Winston can do. It's not the greatest, but it's not the most inspiring football. Uh, so, recap over the uh, last 12 weeks. Last week, we threw in the towel on the Chargers, and they responded with a uh, inspiring 6-0 win over the Patriots. Um, I talked about the Panthers getting officially eliminated from postseason contention. Uh, so, I, again, one for one right there. I had the towel thrown in on, on them week three. Uh, the Cardinals, Bears, and Patriots still kind of hanging around. And that seller of the, in the seller of their individual conferences, uh, ja pa Packers and Rams, two teams currently on the roll. Something to monitor again, like I said right there. And Raiders, how will they look coming out of the bye? They kind of had a two-game win streak uh, after uh, with Antonio Pierce as the interim coach, cooled off a bit with two losses, and they went into the bye. So how will they respond coming out of it? But yeah, that's the recap, uh, and now we get into this week's team. So in the AFC, if you remember, the representative was the Steelers. In the NFC, the representative was the Saints. So Saints versus Steelers, that's your throwing in the towel week 13 Super Bowl. Who wins that Super Bowl? It's the New Orleans Saints. So could not bring myself to throw in the towel on the Steelers. Winning record, still in postseason contention. Uh, they're... And that those last couple spots in the AFC wildcard picture are still very much up in the air, very much to be determined. Whereas with the Saints, well, I talked about it too. Their only path to the postseason is through their division. But when you lost the two teams ahead of you, it, it kind of just, and then you lose your starting quarterback as well. Not for the season, but still, it's it it 
it's just not looking good for the Saints. They haven't played good football even when Derek Hart is on the field too. So that I'm going back to the NFC this week. This is going to be team number eight in the NFC, the New Orleans Saints. That's this week's team. And with that, that will conclude this episode of NFL Discussion Throwing in Towel. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button down below.